Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today, we're gonna to be working on my snow blower. I need to get this thing ready for the winter time. I'm a little bit late this year, it's already December, but better late than never. We still don't have any snow outside, so not a concern yet. Um, today we're gonna to be focusing on getting an oil change, greasing up the auger with some silicone spray, and I also have an upgrade for the impellers in the back. I got an impeller upgrade kit, so I'll be installing that as well. Without further ado, let's get it warmed up so we can change the oil. I'm gonna wheel this outside and get it fired up. Right. now it's all warmed up it's been running for like 10 minutes we're gonna turn it around i like to put the front up a little bit so the oil drains out a little bit easier because you can see the oil drains right right there um and it kind of just dribbles down the back of the snow blower if you don't angle it but they do sell kits that are just like a little extension hose that you can get to clean this up i just never bought one and didn't buy one this year, as you can see. So I'm gonna turn this thing around and we'll start draining the oil. Wipe up that excess oil. Always, always, always have shop rags on hand when you do an oil change on anything. No matter how hard you try, it always makes a mess. And you just snug this on. Let's wheel it back inside and we can put some fresh oil in there. This is the oil that I'm gonna be using. It's just Mobile One 5W30, stuff I had lying around from probably other engines. Um, I know this guy takes about 600 milliliters, so um, best I can tell, we're full to about here, which looks like about 900. So we're gonna cut. Also, a quick tip, if you pour these bottles sideways, they don't glug out as much as they do if you pour them uh, vertically, so you don't spill. Like I have shaky hands and I'm doing this on a camera and I haven't spilled a drop yet. All right, that's starting to feel a little light. Let's see where we're at. Let's get a rag and check our level. And we are high. We are very high. So let's let this sit for a minute. Come back and check it again and see how high it is. All right, she's been sitting for about two minutes. Let's see what the oil level looks like. It's just above the upper dipstick, but I am gonna let some oil out. So this is an easy fix. All I gotta do is just open the drain plug again and drain a little bit of oil out. Just 
Just a smidge on the high side. I'll let a little bit more oil out. Right there, it's in the dead center. Perfect. That's what we want to see. All right, this is an important tip. I have to reach inside of the auger. Never ever do that unless you pull the spark plug. You see the spark plug there? I have the wire right there. Now the engine can't start. If you reach in there, and I know it sounds stupid, but like, how's the engine gonna start if I just reach in here? And I'm sure someone has an example of how that's happened. Uh, I thankfully don't, but there's always a situation where you wanna make sure you're as safe as possible. Okay, now that the oil's done, and I did tighten up the drain bolt on the back off camera with the wrench, so it's not just finger tight. We're gonna focus on the impeller upgrade. So for those of you that don't know, the auger is this bit right here that goes across the front and spins. The impeller is those three blades you see in the back that spin in a circle and shoot the snow up out the chute there. So I bought a kit that's gonna tighten up the gaps. If you look, you can see there's a gap between the metal and the impeller. This is supposed to tighten that up. It's just like a piece of rubber that bolts on there and it's allegedly gonna make this thing much more efficient at slinging snow. So we'll see when, uh, when winter comes around, but I'm gonna install that next. So I think what we have to start with is taking off the chute here so we have access to the top of the impellers. All right, so this here is what comes in the impeller kit. I just bought this off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, and I actually bought a four blade impeller kit even though I only have three blades because I didn't know how many blades I had and I didn't want to walk out to the garage. So they're just these pieces of rubber with holes in them. There's four of them. There's four metal washers to back them and then all their hardware to mount them. It looks like there's some self-tapping screws here and then we've got some nylock nuts and bolts here and i'm assuming these are just i don't know there's four bags of these and one bag of these maybe these are to like drill holes and then those are to put them in or something. i don't know uh, i'm just gonna figure it out but um the first thing i need to figure out is how how long these are supposed to be because looking at the impellers I'm looking at this, you can see they're very different. So I think I need to get a tape measure and figure out how far this distance is right here because I don't think I want it to wrap up. So let me get a tape measure and I'll figure that out. Okay, so I started reading the instructions and the first thing is measure the length of the snowblower blades. Most snowblower blades are bent. They are bent curled on one side. In this case, measure the length of the flat area on the outer part of the blade. We're talking about from here to here. So let's get a tape measure. We're looking about two and a half. These are five inches long. That means I'm gonna have to make two cuts because I want two of these holes to mount on the impellers. So to get my two and a half with two holes, I'm gonna need about a quarter inch on each side. All right. All right, so I had to step into the garage, or the basement, to get these, these cut up. And you want to keep these balanced, it says in the manual. Um, these even cut the same way. The holes aren't even necessarily on the same side, so you see these holes have more space up here. Uh, let's line these up and see how they look. All right, that looks a little bit better. 
So like I said, I need two and a half inches. So if we're looking at these, that's about a, that'd be a half inch, that's too close. See how close that is over there? We don't want that. So let's bring it back to about a quarter inch on that one. And that gets us about a quarter inch on this side. So we need to make two cuts. One's gonna be right around here. And the other's gonna be right around here to get us our two and a half. So that we can have a nice clean cut line. And I know I'm doing this off opposite sides and it's probably knocking this out of whack, but I'm not that worried. I'm just gonna try and keep them all exactly the same so they stay balanced. But those don't look too bad. I mean, rough eyeball, it's fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp all three of these together. And I'm gonna cut them all at once so they're exactly the same. All right, you can see I've got it clamped up in a little vise, all nice and tight together, and I'm going to be using one of these multi-tools to cut it. It says to use, like, a saw or a knife, but, like, if you have one of these things, they cut through stuff really well, so I'm hoping that it'll cut through this pretty easy. Um, let's find out. Not too bad. The important thing is that they're all even, um, and I say even, evenly cut. And you can see that that's relatively well balanced. So I'm gonna flip it around and cut the other line. Well, I forgot to hit record, but I went from the top down and it was much easier than it was to go from the bottom up. So you can see now I've got my chunks. Let's measure them out. They're a little cockeyed looking, but like I said, as long as they're all the same, and it's just a hair over two and a half, and this side's just on two and a half. So let's take these out to the garage and see what they look like. All right, back in the garage. And here we go. That lays right in there perfectly. Next thing we have to do is cut these straps down. Clearly that's too big. So let me go get an angle grinder, and we'll cut three of those down. I'm going to try and do this with a hacksaw first. I do have cutoff wheels, but I just want to see if it's even remotely easy with a hacksaw. So that anybody could do this if they wanted to, not just people with the angle grinders and stuff. That's gonna take all day. I'm gonna go ahead and get an angle grinder. Obviously, they're hot when they come off an angle grinder, so don't be touching that barehanded and you're gonna burn yourself. So the next thing I'm gonna do is lay that out, mark the holes, and drill them. Let me go get a drill. All right, so from what I can tell in the instructions, these are supposed to go on top, like this, on the curved piece. And if you remember from the, the spot earlier where I uh, showed the impeller and the auger spinning, it goes this direction. I guess it goes up. So it spins like that. So you probably want these on top. So that makes sense. And then it says to line them up with the sides of the chute. So like, look at that gap right there. I can literally stick my finger in that gap. It's no wonder this thing's plugging up. Um, but there's also these uh, bolt heads on the side. I think it's probably just gonna wear away on the rubber, but it says to line this up with the edge of the, uh, the chute there. So there's just barely a gap, so I'm gonna just back it off just a smidge like a sixteenth of an inch I'm gonna back it off so you can see now there's a super tiny gap there next I'm just gonna take a marker and trace those holes and then I can figure out where I want to drill my uh, the holes for this because this is really as big as the hole needs to be it does not need to be that big that's way too big those are oversized so you can move that thing around but I'm gonna make them this size so that when I lay this on here, it's nice and snug and doesn't, doesn't shake around on me. And you can see I kind of cut them at an angle. That's my bad. They're all cut the same, so the weight's good. But I'm going to put them out like this. Because you can see that there's this like, lip here. Kind of makes it even. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark those up off camera. And I'll get one drilled. Um, another thing to point out is this spins freely right now. 
So I'm probably gonna jam like a piece of wood or something in there just to keep that from moving while I'm working on it. It's a little bit hard to see, but I marked the big oval holes for the, uh, the rubber bits. And then you can see the inside holes there that I marked and colored in a little bit are the strap, the metal strap that's gonna hold it on the back. That metal hole is the one that I'm gonna cut out. So I'm gonna get my drill and drill it out. And I think if I just take a piece of wood stuff it in here like this. That's probably gonna be the easiest way to do this. So I still have access to those holes right there, but it won't let me push it down. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I just tightened them up a little bit, but not snug, so I can move this back and forth, because um, I want to get it down in here where the, in the housing is, and snug it up there. And I'm gonna try and push it. I'm gonna go even closer than the 16. I'm gonna go right to there, so it's flush up against it. And now I'm gonna tighten it down permanently. <clears throat> That's the last of the impellers. You can see there's a bunch of metal and stuff in here. I'm gonna have to clean all that crap out. It's uh, obviously getting scraped around now that the impellers are so tight against the edge. But it's pretty tight. So I'm gonna slap this whole thing back together real quick. AKA just get the chute back on. Uh, and then I'm gonna clean the metal out and we'll give it a quick fire up, see how it runs. All right, see she's all back together now. Auger works well. I mean the shoot handle thing, whatever. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do, I and mean, I'm gonna do more of this later, but I'm gonna spray down that whole back area with some silicon spray just to kind of ease the uh, those pads in. I don't really wanna just run them super dry and break them on a bunch of random crap in there. So I'm gonna clean this out first and then we'll uh, this is the silicone spray I'm going to be using. It's just another blaster brand product like you've seen here before. Uh, I've been using this on like my dirt bikes and stuff for years and it works really well keeping all the muck and crap off. So I'm going to use it on my snowblower as well. Um, I've never actually used the silicone spray before. I've always meant to. I've heard cooking spray also works, but I feel like silicone spray is probably a little more durable. So I'm just going to try and get up all inside that impeller housing and I'll get more later obviously I'll try and come from the top here and just see what try not to get a lot of this on the floor because I learned from my lesson with the uh, uh, undercoating stuff that I don't really want to have to mop my floor after I'm done but now that that's done let's hook the spark plug back up Let's fire it up. All right, you probably heard that sounded like hell for a second there. I kind of expected that, but it did catch me by surprise at the same time. All right, so I brought this thing off into the dirt where I don't mind if it gets a little messy. And I'm just gonna spray everything including the chute here with silicone spray. And I just want this to coat all my surfaces, all the augers.
the impellers, the bottom of the bucket. There. Hopefully that does it. All right, everybody, that does it. We did the oil change, we did the impeller upgrade, and we did the silicone spray. If you're new to the channel, which I know you are because I have zero subscribers still, please like and subscribe. And if you've seen my videos before, please like and subscribe as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll let you know how the impellers work once we start getting some snow. And until next time, have a good one. Well, finally happened. We got a little bit of snow here. And it's not the usual snow we get. Normally we get the pretty heavy wet snow. It was pretty cold when this came down, so this is really uh, light and fluffy stuff. So the blower throws it pretty good. I uh, got a couple shots of it throwing snow. It's hard to gauge how well the uh, impeller kit works throwing this stuff, because like I said, it's pretty light and fluffy. The impeller kit seems to work a little bit better, but until I get some snow that I'm used to, some heavy, wet, sludgy stuff, I won't really know how it's performing, because that's the main reason I installed it. I mean, if all I had to do was snow blow this stuff all the time, I never would have bothered. This is easy peasy, but the, uh, the sludge that sticks to the inside of the blower and gets gummed up in the chute, that's the stuff I really want to take care of. So hopefully I'll, well, hopefully I never see a storm like that again, because those are miserable to clean up, but if I do, I'll be sure to update this video and let you guys know how the impeller works. <laughs>